NOAA has just issued its February of 2018 Global Climate Report and this video is going to summarize the results from that report. Let's take a look at the temperature map and see what's been going on. First of all we can see that there's a significant La Nina in the eastern Pacific. This always cools global temperatures. Even so, there are many areas around the globe that are showing record warm temperatures. However, there are no areas showing record cold temperatures. In fact, February was 0.65 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. Let's take a look at the temperature changes over the last 100 years. You can see that on the left that the land has warmed a lot more than the oceans. The land having warmed by about 3 degrees centigrade, whereas the oceans by just over 1 degree centigrade. If you compare the two hemispheres, the northern hemisphere has warmed more than the southern hemisphere and that's not surprising because the southern hemisphere has far more oceans and if they warm less quickly than the land then uh, the southern hemisphere will warm less quickly. Let's take a look at the period from December of 2017 to February 2018 which is considered the arboreal winter for the northern hemisphere. This was the fifth such warmest period on record. It was 0.73 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average and you can see from the plot down here it was still dominated by the strong La Nina in the eastern Pacific. However, there are still large areas of the planet that are seeing exceptional warming, including the Antipodes. Let's consider the records that have been set over the last month. For as far as temperature is concerned, there are 6,700 record highs in that period compared with just 5,100 record lows. Now this is a much narrower gap than we've seen in the past, however it's still a statistically significant difference. As far as precipitation is concerned, we have had nine areas of record rainfall, whereas there were 36 areas of record drought. Let's take a somewhat myopic look at the continental United States. As far as temperature is concerned, the southeast had record temperatures and most of the east coast uh, had above average temperatures. In the northern states, it was cooler than average. Alaska, in the meantime, had its fourth warmest winter on record. As far as precipitation was concerned, uh, the southeast uh, had uh, very dry conditions, as did the west. But there was record rainfall through along the Mississippi Valley and through the Ohio Valley and in some of the northern tier states like Montana. We had some significant climate events in February of 2018. As we'll see in a minute, both the Arctic and Antarctic sea ice were near record low levels. There was heavy rain in the continental United States. Europe and Asia were below average temperatures, where you had record temperatures set in South America, in the Middle East and in Australia. Arctic sea ice re reached an all-time low, continuing its slide that's been going on for many years now. For the first time ever, it was below 14 million square kilometers in area. Similarly, the Antarctic sea ice was barely above where it was last year, being the second lowest on record. Overall, there is still an average upward trend in the Southern Hemisphere sea ice, but it's very small. When you combine the sea ice area from the Northern and Southern Hemispheres, there's still a net loss of sea ice globally. What's the ENSO cycle doing at the moment? At the, currently, we have a La Nina condition, but it's weakening slowly and the predictions are for neutral conditions by the spring. Let's take a look at some of the models. Here they are. The ENSO neutral conditions are shown by this pink area and you can see by the middle of the year we may even have some strong El Nino conditions forming which means that we should be having a warming trend over the next few months. Well from the sunspot number it seems that the sun is slipping towards a perfectly normal bog standard solar minimum. Last month we were approximately in the mid-teens for the smooth sunspot number uh, and slipping towards the solar minimum sometime in 2019. It should remain in those conditions for about a year to 18 months and so we should be pulling out into solar cycle 25 around right about year 2000 to 2021. And my prediction, and you heard it here first, is that the next cycle, cycle 25, will be larger than the current cycle. Until next time, goodbye.